Hey guys, it's Eric here at Farpoint Restorations and Repairs. Today, I'll be showing you how to do a full front brake job replacement on your bus. This is any disc brake model bus. That would be 71 and up. We're talking about brake hoses. We're talking about brake calipers. We're talking about brake pads. We're talking about the hardware kit. And we're talking about the rotor. So stick around and we'll get right to it. All right, so this is not that bad a job. This is a fairly, uh, you know, routine job. People are going to be doing at least pads and rotors on their vehicles pretty often, every 30 to 60,000 miles, even on a modern car. The caliper on mine is completely locked up. All the brakes on this bus project are completely locked up. Last thing, last time this was on the road was 1986, so not a huge surprise there. I tried taking it apart to see if I could save the hardware. All that stuff disintegrated when I did so, so we're going from scratch. I'm not going to show you both sides, but I'm going to go through the whole thing step by step on this side, on the driver's side, so you'll get an idea of what is involved in doing it and any of the tick, uh, trip and any of the tricks that I can share with you along the way. Let's head on over to the car and get started. All right, here we go. The very first thing I'm going to recommend you do before doing any additional work, turn your steering wheel. Let's get this caliper facing out a little bit and make our job a lot easier as we go through it. There we go. Now I am going to be replacing the brake hoses. If you're not, you can skip ahead. But to do that, I need to remove this right here. And there is a second one that is right here. It's where the flexible line meets the hard line. Before I take those off, I will break loose my brake line up here at the top. That's an 11 millimeter. Use a line wrench, not an open end wrench, or you run the risk of doing damage to that. And on the bottom, it's a 19. There we go. Once you've got it broke loose, you can switch to a regular open end wrench. Just make sure that you know, you're not twisting the end or you'll end up having to replace brake lines that don't need to be replaced. Generally speaking, if you're not in a rusty area, brake lines should last for the life of the car. That being said, with 50 years on it, Volkswagen uh, enthusiasts do recommend replacing all the hard lines and the soft lines. For money reasons, we're not going to be doing that. Now, if you have any brake fluid in your system, it's about to start coming out. So you might want to throw a catch pan underneath here. This one's about out due to a leaky master cylinder. And I'll show you in another video how to go ahead and fix that. That one's going to be upside down work for the most part. Okay, she's loose there. Now we have to get this here. And it's, it can be tricky. Sometimes it's sticking out just enough. Other times it requires you to kind of pry on things. But again, 40 years of being stuck in the same place. There we go. Yeah, okay, so once you've got it pulled forward, get a screwdriver in there and you can pull it the rest of the way out. And that's it. You don't want to lose those, those have to go back in. And that's what holds our brake hose to the uh, body of the car. Cool. I'm going to do the same thing with the other one here. There's really no way to get a good angle on showing you that, I don't think. Cool. There's the second one. Now, I did not loosen up the, uh, the hard brake line that goes into the caliper. Because I'm taking this caliper off, I'm going to do all that work on the bench. So the next step is to remove the two 19 millimeter bolts. Yeah, there you go. So the next step, I, I won't have the camera back here because I have to get my impact gun in here, but you're removing that bolt and that bolt right there. Those are also 19s. This brake line is free. Oops. This line here is free. So I can move that out of the way as I need to. The, the bra brace is off of it. And I'll just bend that out a little bit when I'm ready to take this thing and put it on the bench. Ah! 
be mindful there's a washer on here it's a kind of a wavy washer you don't want to lose that that one has to go back on all right once i got both those off i'll put those out of the way again you kind of see it's wavy it's not a, it's, it's a flexible washer there so a regular washer probably isn't going to give you give you an idea how rusted on that is it will not come off without some serious prying <laughs> That's crazy. I'm almost afraid I'm gonna pull this thing off the... Uh... Yeah. There she goes, good Lord. Yeah, I'd say she'd seen better days. Brakes were completely shot, it's hard to see in there, but they're done for. And uh, hardware broke. The only part of this we're salvaging is this. Now I'm just gonna set this aside because we still got one more thing we gotta do here. And that is that right there, that right there. Those are Allen heads. And we're going to get those out of there. And that can be a bit of a bear itself because now they tend to rust up. This holds, this holds the uh, rotor to the hub face. And I recommend getting yourself a screwdriver or a pick, kind of cleaning that surface out there. Make this as easy as possible, if possible. Especially, uh, yeah, see this, all this trash gets in here. I wanna make sure that my Allen head goes all the way in. So I'm gonna clean all that out. All those years of rust and dust. Okay. I'm going to tap them in. And we'll give them a little hit with the gun to see if we can break them loose. Let's keep our fingers crossed on this. It's not the end of the world if they break. I like to keep at least one of them working. If they both break, then you lose the uh, ability to hold the rotor on because it's tough to find those flathead screws <coughs> all right cool so we got at least one and you can see there okay they shouldn't be that tight but what happens is rust same thing that always happens go ahead and hammer this one in too impact on these is kind of a it's a mixed bag. You could definitely strip them out with the impact, but the a force of impacting on them usually does help. Now, if yours is as rusty as this one is, you're gonna have to beat on this in order to get it over the hub face here. So that's the next thing I'm gonna do is start whaling on this thing with one, I think a five pound sledge, maybe two and a half pound. Now, this side's coming out. Okay, there we go. And uh, that cover wasn't supposed to come off, but it sure did. So I don't know what to do about that because there should have been a little clip holding that in place. And apparently it was missing or just never installed, I don't know. But I guess it was working before, so I'll leave that be. So I'll lay that aside. We're ready to uh, start reassembling here. Next thing I'm gonna do is go over to the bench and transfer the brake line and the new brake hose over to my new caliper. Let's do that. All right, here we are on the bench with these two beauties. And as you can see, one of them is a whole lot prettier than the other one. And, uh, and that's okay, because this one's going back for a core. One thing I do want you to notice, this one's kind of an unusual one because it's been set up for left or right but you do want to make sure that the one you purchase if you get both sides you got to have this facing towards the top as your air when you go to bleed the air out rises to the top if you put this on the other side it'll fit perfectly but the bleeder will be towards the bottom 
and that won't do you any favors, I promise you. Okay, I'm going to use my 11 millimeter. We're going to break this thing free. Okay, once that's off, then we're done with this. I'm going to drain this thing out and put this for the scrap or for the core charge. All right, now I'm going to take this one off. This tends to be the rustiest one for some reason, I guess because it's inside the well itself. What I usually do, and I'll do this off camera, is I take this and I put it in a vise. That way I can rig this loose with all the force that I need. And then we'll swap that over. I've got a brand new hose here. These uh, rubber pieces are uh, on this side, okay? All right, clean this off here. I like having these metal tops that I put on over the summer, that's for sure. Okay, well, we've got that hose hooked back up there, no damage to that. This side moves freely, that side's a little bit tricky, which is okay, because, well, we don't need it to move anymore. So this side I'm going to go ahead and reattach, and then we're ready to put this thing back on the car. I'll wait to put my pads and my retaining clips in there until after it's mounted on the rotor. I just find it's a little easier to get it all back together that way. All right, well, here we are back at the wheel. The first thing you're going to want to do is make sure that you got your holes lined up with these holes here, the little set screws. So we'll go ahead and once we're sure we got that, get that slid back on. Sometimes it can be a bit of a bear coming up over that, so you might have to give it a love tap or two. And once it's in place completely, we'll go ahead and reattach our two Allen heads here. And you don't want to make those super tight uh, because someday they're coming back off, you know. It becomes more and more of a pain. They get rusty, they just want to sit on there. And because they're recessed in there, that can be a real problem. Well, you can see my breath today is cold in here. We have a new heater coming for the shop, although I don't know if I'll be able to afford to run the thing, but it's coming. All right, cool. I'm gonna move the camera just a little bit. There we go, tilt that down a little, there we go. And once we have that back on, nice, we're ready to put our caliper back on. I've got my caliper sitting here. You'll notice I don't have the brake pads or the springs or any of that stuff in there yet. That's on purpose, trust me. Wait until after you have this assembled. One thing you definitely want to make sure is when you're installing this is you get the right side going to the right place. There's our little bleeder valve. We want to make sure that that faces up. Now I've got my hard line and my new rubber line already attached down here. We'll get everything into place. If I need to loosen anything to make adjustments, I certainly can. That just kind of slides into place. And then we have our two 19 millimeters. Make sure that the washers are still on those. And I'll go ahead and reinstall those. It's always a good practice to start both of these before tightening either one of them all the way down. You know, the worst part about the temperature out here is I've got a wood burning stove going full blast. It's been running for at least three hours. And I have that uh, diesel kerosene jet heater, 80,000 BTU, and I've run that for about two hours. So the second you turn that jet heater off, the air temperature drops back down to nearly zero in about a heartbeat. Of course, it is freaking cold outside, so it's not that much of a surprise. All right, once I've got both of those started, we'll tighten both those down all the way. All right, if you're familiar with Volkswagen or Volvo products, then you're familiar with this style of caliper. You're going to slide your brake pads in like so. And I bought the new kit for it because the other one self-destructed when I tried to took it apart. But we have these pins, and the pins have little retainers, so when you slide them in, you get them started. The top one you can go all the way through. And then you take a hammer. Oop. Not screw it up with one hand. And there you go. Once it's all the way through, it'll float, but it will not come back out. Now, the second one, you do need to slide this up into place. And that holds pressure against the brake pads so they don't clack and rattle. That's a tension brace right there. So you're going to slide this bottom one in. This one, it's hard for me to do this on camera. There we go. And then you slide it until it goes through and then the same rules apply. You tap that in. And that's it. Both of those are now movable. They're under tension. 
the brakes are in place and we are golden. So now we move behind here and let's get that put back. Now I'm not going to show both of these, but I'll show you this one here. There we go. And once you've got that in there, you got to use that, your plate. And you're going to stuff that back in there and hold that in place. And i got to move the uh, camera out of the way because that's right where the hammer is going to go. But you're going to tap that back into place. Make sure that both these connections are tight and we're ready to move on to the top one. Right, once the lower half is attached, you've got this upper one. And you're going to slide that up through. And I like to get everything started before I even consider putting that tab in there. There we go. And then you can just tighten this up until, uh, until you hit tension and then you'll have to hold the bottom. The top is an 11. The bottom is a 17. At least it is on this car. I'm pretty sure that's stock for all the years that have disc brakes, but I'm not positive. Okay, and as you can see, the second that it, the second that this thing got a little tight, it started to rotate the whole mess here. We don't want that. So we'll hold that bottom piece now, which like I said, is a 17. And then we'll switch to we'll hold that bottom one with the 17 and then we'll switch to a line wrench for the top to finish tightening it. Cool. Once that's snug, we'll put our last clip back in place. And that goes right there. Oh, that one needs to be tightened up a little bit. And that keeps that from falling out of the chamber. Well, and that's it, my friends. This is how you go about rehabbing the entire front of the brake system here on your 71 through 79 Volkswagen bus or transporter. New rotors, new caliper, new brake hoses. On both sides, we're done. Ready to move on to suspension, ready to move on to steering, ready to move on to a lot of other stuff. This bus project never ends, like all good projects. <laughs> Till next time, my friends, take care.